It's time for another top five matchup, Ohio State on the road against Penn State at noon. I'm Steven, that's Andrew, and that's Stefan. We'll all be there texting, so you should get the text, 614-350-3315. But for right now, these are our game time decisions. These are things we're interested to see in the game, something that might define the game. Stefan, what's yours? Ohio State's offensive line play. I think I took the easy one. There. Shocker. We, we don't know what the, the offensive line situation is going to look like. We, you know, maybe a few minutes ago – Heard that Zen Mahalski probably isn't going to play in this game. Even if he had, I don't know what Ohio State's answer would have been at left tackle. You know, we saw when, when Zen went down against Nebraska, they moved Donovan Jackson to left tackle, Luke Montgomery at left guard. We'll see if that's the same combination. I think at the end of the day, I'd be pretty surprised if it's not Donovan Jackson at left tackle. We'll see what they do at left guard. Maybe that changes um, as we get to game time. But Ohio State seems pretty adamant that they want to establish a running game. And We'll see how quickly they have to go away with it if it doesn't work. But I think there's going to be an effort early on to do so. And if they can establish a running game, now we're having a totally different conversation. And that all starts with the offensive line, especially the left side of it. What can they do against a Penn State defensive front that's pretty good? Not a, They might not be at 100%, but they still got Abdul Carter, and they got some dudes along the defensive line that are probably better than what Ohio State faced against Nebraska. And it wasn't great against Nebraska. So if Ohio State can have success at, any success at the line of scrimmage, I think they should probably win this game. But if they look what they what they look like against Nebraska, that's why you start looking at a game that's only a three-point spread, and, and it could go either way. Mr. Gillis? So, you know, Stefan kind of stole mine. Um, so that's why I let him go first. I know. So, I mean, I talk about the offensive line, it feels like, in every one of these videos that we do. Which is exactly why I let him go first. Just real quick on that, I think it, it comes down to the interior because I, I think – at the end, you know, we could talk about Abdul Carter, we could talk about Penn State's edge rushers, we could talk about the new left tackle for Ohio State. There are things that you can do to slow that down a little bit. You could chip with a tight end, you can read it with a the quarterback. There's there's things you can do to game plan that. What I am interested in is a question that our own, Stephen Means, asked Ryan Day the other day. I am very curious as to what this run pass ratio looks like on, on Saturday in Happy Valley, and here's why. If Ohio State cannot run the ball, and I do not think they're going to, you do not think they're going to, and you do not think they're going to, go check our other video for how bad I think it's going to get for Ohio State running the ball. If they don't run the ball, how quickly do they pull the shoot? How quickly do they say, you know what, ain't working. I know we got Quinshawn. I know we got Travion. Not today. We'll figure this out later. We, we can't run the ball. Because Chip Kelly said this at his press conference on Tuesday – we're not developing, we have to win. And I wonder how much you are looking at this offensive line, which could have a new left tackle. I know it's somebody that could have played, if it's Donovan Jackson, who could have played already at tackle in his career and could have played all season. You could have Austin Saraveld at left guard, someone who has started a game at left guard this year, started two games at left guard this year. You could have an interior you could have an offensive line that has played, just not in the spots that they are playing. And if it goes poorly, how quickly does Chip Kelly decide, and maybe Ryan Day kind of leaning on him to say, you know what, forget it, we're just throwing it. We're just going to, like, you, you might not have the time to drop back, five-step drop, seven-step drop, and just say Jeremiah beat somebody down the field, and Mecca beat somebody down the field, Carnell beat somebody on a post route. You, you might not have the time for that. So how much do they look at this and say, you know what, bubble screens, slants, you know, RPOs, we're, we're just getting the ball out. We're going to throw it the whole game because we're not even going to try to run it. I'm very curious if Ohio State tries that, what their run-pass ratio looks like, because I think if they try to just really force the issue of running the ball, that's going to go really poorly for them. So I think Ohio State should probably just air this thing out at the beginning and then try to you know set up the run through the pass. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm trying to figure out what type of game this is going to be and what benefits Ohio State more. Does what it was last year where it was essentially a low-scoring game, or Ohio State won that game, by the way, does that benefit Ohio State more? Or does what happened the last time they went to Beaver Stadium where it was 16-14 to 14 <laughs> heading into the fourth quarter and the game finished 44-31, to 31, does that benefit Ohio State more? I don't know, but I think that's what I'm paying attention to is high-scoring or low-scoring. The problem is I should know the answer to that question because his defense should be awesome, so it should just be, oh, Ohio State should win this game 24 to you know 14 or something like that. But the defense has been so shaky that you're not really sure if that's how they can happen this year, time around. Or I could be some, com coming here and saying, oh, if this game is played in the 30s, in the mid-30s, and Ohio State's going to win this game. 
But also the offense only put up 21 points against Nebraska, so you're not even really sure about that. So how much of that is fluke on both sides of the ball? I think the offensive side is more fluke and more just they're just trying to figure out their offensive line. They're trying to figure out if they can run the ball. So fine, I'll, I'll concede that point the way that Jim Knowles has conceded trying to tell Larry Johnson what to do. I think this game is probably going to be won by whoever gets to 30 points. And so that's my game time decision. That's my threshold. Whoever can get the 31st, I think, is going to win this game. And the question is, do I think Ohio State with a compromised offensive line has a better chance of doing that? Or do I think Penn State with a potentially compromised starting quarterback have a better chance of doing that? But I think that's my magic number. 30 points wins this game on Saturday. Those are our game time decisions. We're in the woody right now, but we're going to magically transport ourselves into Beaver Stadium later on today. You're seeing this video at like 5 o'clock in the morning. So in about seven hours, we're going to be in Beaver Stadium. We do this new kind of transportation. It's called uh, rental cars. I wasn't going to say that, but, yeah, that's what we do. We rent a car and we drive, but we'll be we there. We will be traveling on the ground. I don't know if Ohio State will be traveling on the ground. They're not traveling on the ground. They will not be doing that. They'll be going straight to where they're going. But we're going to transport ourselves to Beaver Stadium. That's our game time decision. How fast can we get there? Uh, he's Steph. He's Stephon. He's Andrew. Get to text 614 That was weird. I know. 614 Two-week free trial. Three ninety nine after that. If you want to follow along as we transport ourselves from the Woody to Beaver Stadium. And we'll continue to have this conversation on Buckeye Talk both before the game and after the game. So go listen to that wherever you find podcasts. For Stephon, for Andrew, I'm Steven. And we're transporting now. So long.